Hey guys, this video is going to be an introduction to X-linked recessive inheritance, which has some clinical significance because there are some disease states or syndromes that follow this uh, style of inheritance to the best of our knowledge. Um, examples would be like hemophilia or muscular dystrophy or uh, Lesh-9 syndrome or uh, things like that. Um, as you probably know, just a quick review, um, kind of the default state for our sex, biological sex, is XX, which is a female. Um, the presence of a Y sex chromosome uh, makes an organism into a male. Um, so females XX, males XY. Now when we're talking about these diseases, they follow an X-linked recessive, meaning that if there are uh, two X chromosomes and one is recessive and one is dominant, um, the disease won't manifest itself in the phenotype. Um, however, uh, we commonly see these diseases manifest in males because their genotype only has one copy or one X chromosome. Thus, if that is an affected uh, a genotype, a, a genotype that has the trait, um, it will manifest because there's no uh, there's no opposite X that is uh, that would be dominant and would be making the the affected trait into a carrier state. So, um, perhaps what I'm trying to say could be best illustrated by a pedigree. Um, and as we look down here, we have an XY father and an XX mother. You can see that the mother, um, as denoted by the colors and the underline, is a carrier, or she's got a genotype that's heterozygous. Um, one X is wild type, and one X is, uh, is the trait. Let's say it's uh, hemophilia. Um, and so although this mother has that trait on one of her X chromosomes, it is being covered up by the dominant X that she has. Thus, she's not so showing any... Uh, signs or symptoms of hemophilia. However, when these two have a kid, any males that they have, well, the only uh, Y, to make them a male, the only Y they get can come from their father, which means that it's kind of a toss-up whether or not that male will receive the wild type X or the recessive X. Now, I'm just going to draw one more male here. Hopefully, you can see this. Just to show you that for this male over here, uh, he received the wild type X and the Y from the father. Wild type X from the mother, Y from the father. Whereas this male over here is affected by hemophilia because he received the Y from the father and then the affected X from the mother. So although everyone in his family, his four brothers and sisters and his two parents, they don't have hemophilia, he does have hemophilia. Another thing to note here, is that two of his sisters are wild type X from father and wild type X from mother, so they're not affected. Another sister is that exact same way. However, this sister, just like her mom, is wild type X from her dad and then affected X from her mother. So she might go on to have a situation just like this, like her mom did, having this affected son. So if you have, uh, it's kind of like cystic fibrosis or other recessive diseases, where if it shows up in your family because... You know, your, fam your parents found each other and had some kids, um, and it shows up in your family. Like if you were this individual and your brother had hemophilia, you might want to get yourself checked because you might be this sister that is a carrier for the trait and thus could have a child with hemophilia. Or you could be this sister that's wild type X, wild type X, and thus you're not a carrier and uh, your offspring have no chance of, uh, you know, being hemophiliac. Um, that's excellent recessive. So... Um, it most often shows up kind of like in a recessive style on pedigrees where it's not present at every generation, um, but it usually presents itself um, uh, in males because they only have one copy of the X. Thus, the recessiveness of this X-linked trait can manifest without being canceled out by a dominant X or wild type X.